Hey everybody, it's Dr. Nick. I mean Dr. C here, all the way from Canada, so I'll talk loud, with episode 93 of All This Science, the science podcast that describes a scientific concept in five minutes or double your money back. Each episode is raw, unedited, the real deal. I'm going to continue a detour that I started in episode 91. I'm going to talk about science education and my role as a science teacher. In addition to being a quantum chemist, I am a high school teacher and have been one for 27 years. I've seen a lot over the years. This episode is called 20 Don'ts. I give tips for what you should not do as a high school science teacher. It's a lot easier than telling you what you should do, though I'll sneak a bit of that do in here too. Hopefully beginning teachers, pre-service teachers, teacher candidates, and even experienced teachers will find at least a percentage of these tips helpful. I might go a bit more than five minutes, so don't be angry if I do. (coughs) Rather, (coughs) excuse me, just soak up the sunshine. Here we go. Tip number one. Don't make references to things kids don't know. For example, I made a Dr. Nick Riviera reference at the beginning of this episode, but most students, unfortunately, don't watch The Simpsons. (coughs) So making the reference makes me laugh and cough, but just conveys the idea to the students that I am old and out of touch. Same goals for Seinfeld references or Madonna or Maradona. If you really want to make a reference, you have to be up on what the kids are doing now. Hello, Aqua Teen Hunger Force and Drake. Number two, don't relive your high school students' years years as a teacher. Yeah, the students might want to hear one or two of your stories as a student. For example, I was a pretty wild student. I was part of the Spider-Man club where we snuck into a chemistry lab and watched the psychedelic 60s Spider-Man cartoons at lunch. But your role is different now. Don't try to be cool with your students. Be genuine. Heck, I was never cool as a student. Probably because we didn't have air conditioning and electricity wasn't invented yet. Also, I would wear these hand-me-down plaid pants, and kids used to say, Hey, Dr. C, your pants match your pencil case. Never discuss who's dating who or any of that other teenage drama stuff. That is not your role. Obviously, if a very serious situation arises and a student confides in you, then, with the help of a school counselor, resolve the issue. Tip number three, don't talk politics. Well, you can a tiny bit, but only if the student brings it up. And then work it so the student gives his opinion and others respond. You don't have to chirp in much. The kids sometimes just want you to know that they are following current events. Now, sometimes in the name of science, you have to step in. If some kid is promoting some radical political agenda that vaccinations cause autism, direct them to some real scientific research, not that baloney. Tip number four, don't talk religion in a public school. You are teaching science. Number five, don't be a Veronica Mars, Betty Cooper, Sherlock Holmes. It is a colossal time waster to chase down a student who has skipped a class or a test. It is a cat and mouse game that is far from perfect, a little cheesy in fact. If the only highlight of your day is trapping this kid in a lie or a web of lies, then get a new job. Just wait till the next day, put your arms to your side and look at the kid without saying anything. Usually he'll fess up. If he gives you some ridiculous excuse, your look should suffice to prevent him from doing so in the future. Obviously, if this becomes a trend, you'll have to talk to the school counselor. Number six, don't talk to parents aside from parent-teacher day. I went to teacher's college, also known as normal school, to learn how to teach students, not their parents. Parents are sometimes frustrated with their child and don't need you to call to say that their kid acted up in class or ditched class. It's piling on. You won't always get a supportive response from a parent, They'll foist the responsibility to you. You like that word? Foist. Not to them or to their kid. Not taking responsibility for one's actions seems to be a growing trend in today's society, unfortunately. Now, some parents will email you every other day asking for progress reports. Tell them to ask their own kid, for goodness sakes. Also, don't think you can fix every issue that a student and his family might have. You are there to teach the class to help the child learn and grow in a safe, enjoyable environment. You are not a miracle worker. I've taught for 27 years. I've seen students improve a lot over the course of a class. I attribute that to listening to what they have to say, to being positive and accommodating, but with still a push that it is the student's responsibility to learn and be respectful. Tip number seven, don't make a seating plan. Kids naturally find a place to sit within the first week. Give the students some autonomy. The same goes for the bathroom. Don't try to control a student's bodily functions. Kids ask me if they can blow their nose. Yeah, 
go blow your nose. Tip number eight, don't give a kid a nickname. Rather, learn the kid's name and practice the pronunciation. In the first week, you can ask if the kid would prefer to be referred to by a different name. Same goes for gender identity. Tip number nine. As I go, we got 20 of these. I hope you're going to find some of them helpful. Never make a f- kid feel guilty. Mm-hmm. For example, Joe forgets to do the chemistry reading assignment. The next day you ask, so who knows what a mole is? Wait for three seconds. Joe? Uh, uh, I don't know. Well, if you would have read the textbook, you would have known. Now, that's a lousy response. Don't answer like that. It doesn't make the kid learn anything. It just consolidates that he's forgotten to read the assignment or doesn't understand the reading or makes him resent things happening at home that are preventing him from doing his homework. We as teachers don't know all the reasons why a student isn't prepared for class. Rather, what we should do is this. Joe. The mole is discussed in detail on page 63 to 67 of the textbook. You might want to reread the concept. Chris, in the meantime, helped Joe out. Help describe the mole. This method works. It works because I've done it and I see that it works. It keeps the lines of communication open. No guilt, no shame equals better learning in the long run. Number 10. Don't hold a grudge. If a student exhibits rude behavior toward you, diffuse the situation quickly. Have the student go to the cafeteria or library to cool off. Tell the student that when he chooses to write an apology to you, he may return. Don't involve the parents or the admin. When the student comes back, start with a clean slate. Number 11. Don't ridicule a student based on the way he talks, the way he dresses, or any of his mannerisms. If you're in the business to make fun of people, go into another business. Maybe there's an opening on a Dean Martin comedy roast or Jimmy Kimmel or whatever. Number 12. Don't be sarcastic with kids. Sarcasm can be very subtle, and many teenagers and grown-ups do not pick up on that. It's an ugly way to teach. Number 13. Don't always choose the super smart guy to answer every question. Distribute your call-ons instead. If you you do that for half the class, is it a semi-call-on? Now, you might not get quite as much of the curriculum covered, but you shouldn't sacrifice learning for speed. I know, easier said than done. Tip 14. Don't take out your anger or personal frustrations on your students. If you're ticked off because you broke the snored bed frame you got from Ikea that said easy assembly, well, it's not the student's fault. It's the Ikea instructions which have every screw looking the same. You can begin the class by launching a preemptive strike. Kids, I'm having a rough day, but I'll do my best to deliver a good experience and respect you all. If I get snarky, please tell me. I'll appreciate it. This shows you are real. You are approachable. If something is making you furious, go for a walk to the storeroom and cool down. Maybe come back with a GHS label on your head saying highly reactive. Or if you snuck a burrito in the storeroom, compressed gas. By the way, the GHS Jive, a song I wrote about the globally harmonized system, has its lyrics posted on my blog, allthisscience.blogspot.com. Tip 15. Don't criticize another employee of your school. Don't let students criticize other teachers in front of you. It is not professional. Teaching is a career, a profession. Gossip and petty remarks transform teaching into a just a lousy job. Aim high. Tip 16. Aside from greeting each student as they enter your class, don't feel that you have to connect with each student each class. I usually work in quadrants, so I focus more on one quarter of the room each day and then shift to the next quadrant the next day. I'm going for depth over breadth. Also, make sure to remember one thing about each kid. For example, suppose Joe works at McDonald's. You can connect by saying, Hey Joe, since we just finished the heat capacity unit, you can explain to your colleagues why the inner liquidy part of the apple pie is hotter than the doughy outer part. Mm -hmm. 17. Don't try to be a hero. If a situation really spins out of control so that some students could potentially be harmed, speak with the school counselor or admin immediately. Tip 18. Don't be a half-assed listener. I share an office with five other science teachers. Sometimes I'm on the computer looking at all the new podcasts on Spreaker.com. This episode sponsored by Spreaker.com. When a colleague comes in and wants to talk about a fishing trip he was on, I sort of listen to him, but I keep sneaking a peek back to the computer screen. That is a bad thing to do. I wouldn't want my students to do that while I was talking with them. I got to work harder on that, personally. Tip 19. Don't be fair. Hmm. Let me rephrase that. Don't be obsessed with being fair. Life is not fair. Suppose you have a student who has just arrived from a war-torn country and he comes into your class and he's got limited English. 
Do you give them the test the same day as the other students who might not have had the same emotional baggage? You, the teacher, have to decide what accommodations to make. You have to be flexible. If a kid complains and says, it is not fair that the new kid is getting more time to prepare, ask if he would like to change places with the new kid. We do our best, but we are not robots. We are not a business. I resent when business types try to force their strategies on a school. We take all tomatoes, not just the shiny ones. If we have to play some ketchup, so be it. Tip 20. Don't count the days till summer starts. Teaching is not a prison sentence. It is a career that can be very rewarding. I have taught science for 27 years. I love it. Hope you love this episode of All This Science. If you want, tweet me at All This Science or send me an email, allthisscience at gmail.com. Do have a great day.